Good morning and good afternoon, depending on where you're at. Welcome to the Dos Leprechauns Media Podcast. Uh, as you can see, I'm joined by Notre Dame legend, Chicago Bears legend, Chris Zorich. And I uh, want to hope everybody had a great 4th of July. I hope you guys stayed safe, had some fun, got to hang out with the family a little bit, um, and uh, just generally celebrated our nation's freedom. Um, but uh, we're really excited to have Chris on again. Chris, we've had Chris on a couple times, and i got to be honest, one of my favorite things that we've been able to do with Joe Supper Cons is we were actually a guest on Chris's show, which was super cool. That was 100 years ago. Remember that? A little bit ago, yeah. It was during COVID, and I think you were trying to just give people something that to smile about for a minute, and uh, we got to go live with you, which was a, a, a really cool honor for us. So uh, nice. Thanks, thanks again for coming on, Chris. I know you got a lot going on, so I appreciate you making the time. Well, I'm honored that you guys are looking at me as uh, the the number fifty, so to speak, as the combat. Yeah, well, you know, there's there was another number fifty that we started with today. A kid named Rocco Spindler, who's on the, the football team now at Notre Dame. A uh, kid that I think uh, could potentially be the starting guard this year on that offensive line. But um, you know, when people think of number fifty in Notre Dame, I think everybody automatically thinks of the big guy, Chris Zorich. You know the madman, the animal, making some huge plays on the 88 team, the 89 team. And, uh, you know, I think that when people see that 50 jersey, they automatically associate with you. So it's a no-brainer that we, we wanted to reach out and get you on the table. <laughs> well, I remember uh, Spindler's dad, actually. Um, I've been watching Rocco um, just from afar as a fan, but uh, I remember his, his dad uh, played in the NFL for – for several years, so. Yeah, he's a big dude. I, I met Rocco a couple years ago at, at Notre Dame on campus, and his dad's just as big as he is, if not a little bigger. So, <laughs> definitely good bloodlines there. So, all That's right, awesome. man, Here on Dose Supper Cons, we like to hit, you know, we like to start with the hard pressing questions, the, the answers that you can't wiggle your way out of. So, the, the burning question I have for you, man, is tell us about that kilt last year, bro. <laughs> Oh gosh! Well, that, I mean that that was it, it was crazy, man. Um, I'm sorry about that. No, you're good. Um, it, it was uh, one of those things where uh, Jerry Garvey kind of talked me into. Uh, well, he actually had an extra one, and. I had the opportunity to be the, how was it, the um, the guest announcer for the Marshall game, uh-huh. and kind of wanted to do something that was a little different, um, and I think kind of going out with the kilt was it was awesome. The fans went nuts, I went nuts, but uh, wound up making that a tradition. So now. It's going to be one of those things where I'll have to be wearing it every week now when I go back. Yeah, it's kind of going to be a requirement. But you you pulled that thing off well. You know, Gary, you mentioned Gary Canada. He's a good friend of ours here at Del Supper Cons. We love that guy. Call him the Irish Giant. And uh, he told us before the game he was going to get you to wear a kilt. I'm like, there's no way you're going to get Chris Zorris to wear a kilt. He's like, Exactly. No, and sure enough. I mean, well, but, but then he was also smart. He had like – Four or five of them, uh, you know, with him. So, of course, the first one he can offer you fit, you know. Yeah. And I think he wanted to give him that one to um, to Lee Beckton. Yeah. Now, me and Lee are, are going to be wearing uh, wearing our kilts now. It's funny because I just got a call from Lee a, a couple weeks ago asking if, if the kilts are going to be on this year. Love it. So, so it's confirmed. Breaking news, Zorich and, and Beckton are going to be having a field song to get cold this year. All right. I'm posting that right now. However, if it's too cold, I mean, you know what? Um, I'm over that 50 age now, so, you know, I can't be hanging out, you know, with just underwear or nothing going to be to kill when it's cold. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, you know, that. speaking of that, last year I know you were at um, – the tailgates we were having right there where, where Dan, Dan, the tailgate man's always at, Daniel Morrow, uh, yeah. next to Lee. And um, okay. it sucks, man, because, you know, we weren't able to, me and Leprechaun Nate weren't able to get out until the Boston College game, which for a guy living in Arizona coming from Cali was way too cold. And your your lovely wife, Candy, was like, yeah, man, we're not going out there. I was like, this is 
the one weekend I come out, I don't get to hang with Zorro. That's great. Right, right. But uh, yeah, it was a good time, and I'm. I really, I think people really appreciate seeing that side of you, Chris. I think that you know people associate you with this this animal on the field, but I think that people that know you know that you got a soft heart, you got a big heart, and and you just want people to be happy, and and you kind of saw that with your personality coming out and, and the kilt on. And I thought it was cool that some of the other announcers, I think it was Chris Sims. Uh, brought light to the, the the kilts as well, so that was very well publicized. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it was something I had an opportunity to uh, comment on our on our team. Unfortunately, we, we had a horrible game, but uh, I'm not blaming the kilt on that. Yeah, I think there's plenty of blame to go around the kilt. <laughs> what happened there? But speaking of the team, so Coach Freeman, second year, um, I think that universally coach Freeman is res- well respected loves you know the whole thing you know I don't know if you follow too much of su- the recruiting stuff and some of the stuff going on on social media and all this you know everybody's a coach everybody's a recruiter and all that in your opinion as a guy that played at the highest levels was recruited heavily all that kind of stuff what how what what grade would you give coach Freeman right now on his recruiting efforts and, and his entire team of recruiters well I mean, uh, <laughs> We aren't going to really see anything until kind of year one, year two, right? I mean, I don't think you're going to have a bunch of these guys coming and starting right away. Um, the idea that he's a voracious recruiter, his staff, they're great. Um, uh, they've been able to bring in a bunch of four and five star guys to visit. With which um, Brian Kelly wasn't able to do. Uh, we we've signed a couple of them. However, we have lost a couple of them as well. But overall, I mean, I, I'm giving him like a A, you know, I mean a B plus plus plus. Uh, with, with the the idea that you know these kids really are, are unknowns yeah, unknown until they get on the field, field and put on the pads. I mean, I, I mentioned uh, uh, when I was being recruited, I mean, we had a bunch of guys that were five-star guys. They were, star guys. They were uh, national players of the year uh, for various publications. I really never played it down. And so you know, really what we're looking at is what's the, the – Potential of these young men, right? I mean, kind of coaching, coaching staff, staff coach them up coach them to the point where where, where they can perform, they can perform on the field, and I think that's the most important thing. For sure, and and it's interesting to me. You know, I appreciate the insight there, but I, it's interesting to me that I look back, I, I go and look at the recruiting rankings pretty often, um, and in 2024, where a lot of people are saying things like, "Oh, Coach Freeman's missing. They need to seal the deal, close the deal, blah blah blah." I'm like, dude, we have a we're, we're the number six ranked, number six composite ranked class in the nation in 2024, with a guy like C.J. Carr leading the class, Cam Williams, both guys that probably will end up getting a fifth star, and you know another ten four star guys and some other you know high caliber three star. Stars are just what they are, you know. Like you said, they haven't played it down yet. Some of these guys and I, you know, are asking for literally a million dollars, if not more, before they even play it down at college football, and I think it's insane. So. I personally believe that Coach Freeman is doing an outstanding job uh, on the recruiting trail. He's not going to get everybody. We don't have enough scholarships to go around for everybody. So, you know, to the naysayers out there, I think you just got to give him some time to, to get his guys in there, coach them up, buy into the, the system, and I think they're going to be just fine. Well, I, I agree with you as well, but you also have to factor in the idea of, you know, what's going on with the NIL. You know, now we have that collective – where they're able to support, but you know, there aren't paying kids millions and millions of dollars like what other schools are. Here. So, the idea that the Freeman could keep and get four or five star guys to visit their name and commit without paying them the millions of dollars, I mean, it's just an, a testament to him and the staff. Sure, for sure. Now, with that in mind, you know, looking at the 2023 team and what you know of it thus far, you know, we get a guy like Sam Hartman to come over from Wake Forest, ACC all-time leading passer. Uh, you know you're going to have the running game is going to be there. The O-line is going to be there. Um, what's your take on this year's team, strengths, weaknesses? 
you know, I, I don't like to get into predictions. Oh, we're going to go 10 and two and let, whatever. <laughs> what's your take on this year's team? How, how are you feeling? How, what's your vibe? Oh, I think that the <laughs> success that Coach Freeman had, had last year last was really year important. Was um, um, you know, he faced some faced some adverse situations. situations. He lost some games. games, and I think, and I think you know we all, we all tend to think, tend to think a head coach, head coach can do anything. Do anything. Um, um, I mean, I, I'm, yeah, only I'm only saying, saying this because, because when I did my first did podcast, podcast, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was doing. <laughs> I'm sure I'm you're sure the same you're way. You know, the, the first day on the job, so to speak, so to speak uh, I really wasn't uh, sure what was going on. So we have to understand, have to understand that Coach Freeman did a great job as a first-year head coach at Notre Dame. And oh, by the way, he's never been head coach before. So let's kind of – we can look at that basis and kind of grow from there. Um, will he improve? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it was a crucial offseason. Uh, I think spending time with the team, I was fortunate to be there a couple times and watch practice, um, see Coach Freeman interact with the players. And he's just building on the momentum of last year, but also having his coaches in place now. Uh, there, are, there are obviously a lot of changes in the offseason. And it's important that. He's able to get his group together, group together and really and coach and have, and have a philosophy that he wants. Or when we look at Al Golden, right? And he's someone who has a chance to come in there and really kind of uh, allow or to kind of show Coach Freeman how to be that head coach. And that's important. And when you kind of uh, combine everything, um, like you said, I don't want to say we're going to win – five, six games, whatever it is, we're going to be, be better than last year. But I always tell folks that uh, Coach Holtz was, he was five and seven, or five and six, five and seven, um, his first year. And, you know, in year three, he wins a national championship. So let's give him the the time to mature as a coach. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about the season. Uh, I think Sam Hartman was obviously a huge addition, something they needed. And as we've seen, everything starts with the quarterback position. Yeah, no, great analysis. And I appreciate you, again, as a, as a player, as somebody that was at Notre Dame, um, giving Coach Freeman some grace. And it just always cracks me up when some fans are like, well, we need to do better. We need – it's like we're fans, we fan, right? Like Subway alum, real – whatever – our, our, we're not in the in the in the trenches, so to speak. We're not in the locker room. We're not having those conversations. And it, it, some fans will never be happy. We know that. You know that. Everybody knows that. But I think that I don't remember as a thirty plus year fan. I don't remember a time that I've been this high on the program as a whole. And that's with all these weird unknown factors like the NIL and the transfer portal and things like that. So with all of those factors at play, you know, and the already competitive environment that college football is nowadays. Coach Freeman's killing it, man. I mean, the guy, you know, makes me want to run through a wall. And, you know, I know you were at fantasy camp this past year. And those guys said the same thing. They're like, man, Freeman was there the entire time. He was getting us fired up. He knows us by name. That kind of stuff matters, man. And he's teaching it's... his kids. He's teaching these 19, 20, 21-year-olds, uh, you know, how to be men and how to be successful in life, not just in Notre Dame. And if you really care about Notre Dame, that's really a big part of what you should, what you should care about. Well, and, and, and really understanding what Fantasy Camp is, for those folks who might not know what it is, um, you have an opportunity as a fan, regardless of age, uh, to go and become a Notre Dame football player for several days. Uh, the final game, after a couple of practices, the final game, you put on full pads, and it's a touch game in the stadium. Uh, oftentimes, you'll see guys getting tackled and knocked out of bounds or anything like that. But the fact that Coach Freeman was there every day, and he wasn't at every single meeting, but he was there every day. You saw him, and that final game, I mean, he was there last year. He was there this year. I mean, it's something that the the fantasy camp participants, or participants love, and really that's what you can kind of build kind of the, 
the subway, subway um, uh, aspect, aspect on, right? right. Because, because, I mean, he, he cares about he cares folks that technically aren't involved in the program, but kind of are indirectly, right? right. right. Sure. And so it's when you see the type of commitment, commitment that he has with kind of fantasy fans, fans. I mean, imagine what it is for current players, former players, and guys who just finished playing, coming back to advice. I mean, he is the right coach at the right time for Notre Dame. I'm gonna. I'm literally gonna quote that. that that's the perfect. That's exactly all. I, I think. I. You know, it's funny because when all that stuff was going on when Kelly left, it was all the speculation of who's gonna get the. You know, who's gonna be the coach, and the outpouring of support for Freeman from alumni from recruits, from current players was incredible. And whether Swarbrick was going to do that, was, was, was going to make the hire for Freeman anyways, they, he did the right thing, thank God. But, you know, you hear some of the other names, Coach Fickle, Luke Fickle, not a bad coach, obviously, good football coach. But he doesn't have the it, in my opinion, that Coach Freeman has. And I just pray, and I know this sounds ridiculous because it's football, but I pray that we're able to keep the guy, man. Like, I just hope that he doesn't get – Ohio State come calling or something like that. But, you know, everything I've heard him say is that he's he loves Notre Dame and he wants to be here for a, a long time. So well, it, it's amazing because I, I have a uh, – during the college football season, I have a, a podcast, uh, the Super 16 Pulse Show with Chris Zorich. We, we kind of highlight the top 16 teams in the country. And we were on, and my producer, Phil – kind of shot me a message and said, hey, Brad Kelly just left Notre Dame. And I was like, there's no way. And he's like, no, it's true. Who do you think? And, and I had already uh, interviewed uh, Coach Freeman on my podcast when he was the, the defensive coordinator. And I was like, there's no way they're going to get Marcus because he's never been a head coach before. So I started talking about Luke, Luke Fickle, Andy Heckman. I started talking about folks that, that I would like to see in that position. And then when I had him on after he became the head coach, you know, I had to be honest. And I was like, you know, Coach Freeman, you know, I was on air when Kelly left and my producer was like, you know, hey, this is the opportunity for your guy, or excuse me, the head coach. And I was like, he's not going to, he's not going to get it. And to his credit, he was like, Chris, I didn't think I was going to get it. You know, so <laughs> the the honesty and humility that he has is just amazing. And when you talk about being a leader and what leadership means, you know, he is that that servant leader that really cares more about the the individuals that are part of the team or that he's leading than himself. Beautiful. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, all right, Chris, I know you got a lot going on, so I want to wrap up here real quick with something. And, and that's, you know, I'm sure a lot of people have seen it, but maybe some aren't aware of how to, to go about doing this. But um, talk to me about you, your and yours and Candy, your wife, uh, your mini clover, and then other you know rental properties and things you got going on. I just want to, you know, cheap plug for you guys, but you know, I haven't been there yet. But dude, that place looks. Hope I'm not going to get censored here, but that place looks badass. So, <laughs> no, nah, so it's, it's 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 a fun time. Yeah, uh, it's anybody it's interested. Yeah. They can just go to the miniclover.com. All the information's there. Um, we still have a few games that aren't rented yet, so folks might want to participate. And really what's unique uh, about this is that you'll have a chance to kind of – I'll check you in. Uh, we'll have a chance to hang out for, for like an hour. Um, and then we provide a helmet for for the people that are, the, that are guests. Uh, we got jerseys, posters, football cards. I mean, you name it, we got it. And we want to kind of give uh, the fans that have a chance to um, rent our Airbnb kind of that championship experience. And so I have pictures on there of Lou Holtz, Coach Freeman, Tony Rice, Rocket. I mean, and there's great stories behind all of these, all these photos. And so, you know, I had to spend an hour with you. And you'll have a chance to spend the weekend there. And it's really a great time. We're actually, we're, we're, we're on Angela. So it's about maybe a 10-minute walk, uh, probably like a three-minute car drive to campus. Um, I've done it numerous times. It's really a, a great, great, fabulous time. I, I've stayed there. Um, we've, we've had some players from, 
some former players stay there. It's just a, a great time. But more importantly, I mean, it's really cool because we're so so close to campus and literally we're stone throw away. Um, I just, if folks want more information, you just go to theminiclover.com. I got it. Uh, I put it in the show notes here, so we'll have that. Okay. Uh, line um, quick question. Somebody just text. Is it if, if somebody comes and it's not the not in season, it, it, do, are they still able to get the Chris Orch experience? If it, like, how does that work? That would be upon request okay. uh, only because I have a, a day job and I can't like kind of hang out at the at the place waiting for people to come in. But if, if, if they want to have what we call the Zorch experience um, during the non-football season, I'm sure we can definitely work something out. But again, this is a great opportunity to kind of experience Notre Dame as a, a, a champion. And, I mean, again, hanging out with me, um, sharing some little whole stories, some stories about winning the national championship and kind of seeing all of the uh, – all the, the beautiful names that we have at the Airbnb, but more importantly, you're kind of immersed in it. That's incredible. Yeah, as soon as I saw that, and, and if I'm not mistaken, you and your family, you and your wife and your daughter were kind of the ones that, that did all the renos, right? Like you guys did all the renovations and everything. Some of them. So, so, uh, no, we didn't do all, we did some. Um, and it was great because it, it was my wife's idea saying, hey, let's, let's do an Airbnb. Kind of let's theme it with, with you know the, the national championship team and yourself, and so that's kind of how it got started. And we had a blast with it last year. We got a, a bunch of fans come out. We got photos on a website, kind of showing how interactive it is. Love it. Shout out to your wife, Candy Zorich. She's awesome. We love talking to her too. Yes, so. always. Shout out to my wife. If I don't say that, you might get in trouble. So exactly. Yeah, same. Shout out to my wife too. Thanks, babe. Um. Yeah, behind every great man is a great woman, so good stuff. Absolutely. Or in my case, too, my, our daughter, Kylie, and, of course, Kim. Damn, I'm getting cool points all over. There you go, man. Hey, Chris, um, thank you so much for the time today. I know you're busy, so, uh, again, appreciate the time very much. You're you're just – you're the man, like, straight up. We, we appreciate you. You, you got it, man. Well, I appreciate it, and I'm honored that you're able to at least to have me as – one of the 50 days or one of the days leading up to the season. So I am honored to be number 50 for you. You're always going to be the number 50. So, uh, you know, every year around this time, you know, look forward to that, but uh, look forward Sounds to seeing good. you. This year we'll be out at Ohio state week for us. So look forward to having a couple pops with you and a couple burgers or something, man. Yes. Yes. We will. Enjoy it, man. Be good. Right. Thank you. Take care. Go Take Irish. Care. Take care, buddy. All right, so I hope everybody enjoyed the interview with Chris Zorich, legendary Notre Dame defensive player, played a little bit of defensive line, played a little bit of linebacker, played a little bit of whoop you and kick you in the face, especially if you're an SC player. Um, Chris has always been very generous with his time, so we obviously uh, appreciate him very much coming on. Um, if you didn't get the, uh, the announcement of his Airbnb, it's in the show notes, theminiclover.com. Have a couple of friends that stayed there, and it, it really is an incredible experience for game day. You go in, get to meet Chris. Like you mentioned, talk, talk about some, some Notre Dame times, some Lou Holtz stories. Get a bunch of free – well, not free because you pay for it with your cost, but include, included in the cost is a, a helmet sign, jerseys, pictures, you know, whatever. I mean, for a, for a super fan and, and obviously a fan of, of the, the Irish back in the late 80s and, and some of those glory years, it's a, can't, it's a must-do experience. We're – we're going to try to do it at some point this year. Hopefully the Wake Forest game isn't sold out, but uh, yeah, looking forward to that experience as well. So I apologize if this did not end up on Facebook live. This is our first time using uh, StreamYard. Nate Leprechaun Nate is actually in California right now visiting uh, his grandparents and going to the, uh, going to the angels versus the Dodgers tonight. My poor angels, man. He's going to, I hope he can get a win, but that's going to be a tough, tough two games for us. Uh, but yeah, Leprechaun Nate's out in Cali. Uh, shout out to him. Uh, shout out to the whole crew that helps make this possible on our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. Uh, Joe from Fighting Irish Faithful is actually going to be doing a podcast this year on Tuesdays. Um, so what's going to happen is that every Sunday, starting the first weekend in August, uh, Dos Leprechauns will be live, similar to this format on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, we'll have interviews with former players, maybe some current players, maybe some future players. Um, and then on Tuesdays, Joe from Fighting Irish Faithful on Twitter and YouTube 
uh, we'll come in and do more of the X's and O's type podcast. So break down the game, what went well, what didn't. Um, he'll talk about, you know, the next week's opponent, uh, things like that, get into more of the analytics. Uh, so that'll be on Tuesday nights, also uh, live and, and an opportunity to listen to it later. Uh, but again, Sundays will be with us, still Cybercons Media here on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, and then Tuesdays with Fighting Irish Faithful with Joe. And sorry, Joe, but I'm not going to even attempt your last name. So just look up Fighting Irish Faithful. So shout out to Joe. Shout out to Jason Lynch, who does a lot of the edits. Wayne Smith, who also does a lot of the edits that you guys will see on the countdown. Benny Grimm, call him the tank. Uh, he does a lot. He's the historian, so he provides all the write-up on these guys. And uh, you're not going to find a, a, a better historian. That guy's a walking Notre Dame encyclopedia. Uh, so shout out to that guy for helping, with, helping out with the posts. Patrick McCormick, also helping out with the posts. Uh, and, and just the general upkeep of the page. Uh, we just got a great group of guys that help um, put all this together with those separate cons and make it uh, hopefully the best fan site, you know, around uh, for, for the fans. We're not going to be, as, as some people like, some people don't like, we're not going to be that page that's critical and, and gets up in arms and yells and screams. If you like that kind of thing, great. More power to you. And, and you know, I, I hope everybody's successful. Uh, but we're, gonna, we're not going to do that. We enjoy Notre Dame. We're passionate about Notre Dame and, and we want to celebrate everything our ladies university provides, uh, not just for the football, for college football, for, for their alumni, for their future alumni, future students, things like that. So it's a good time. So it's going to be a big year for us. Again, we'll be out at Ohio state. So we'll be doing some, look for some announcements there. We're going to be doing a meet and greet more on that to come. We're going to have a tailgate at every single Saturday home game. So shout out to Dan Morrow, uh, Dan, Dan, the tailgate man, uh, is going to have a Bill Cybercons tailgate on uh, Saturday game days in South Bend. Look for more info on that. There are going to be some, I guess, for lack of a better term, expectations. We don't want people coming in drunk and acting a fool, but everybody's welcome. Just, you know, be cool. You know, don't be a jerk. Um, kind of had some issues with that last year, so we want to make sure that doesn't happen again. Uh, then we'll be out in Palo Alto, California for the Stanford game. Uh, so we'll see us there as well. So big year for us. We're excited. Excited to meet a bunch of you guys and hang out and and just uh, celebrate what's what's sure to be a, a really um, exciting year. I can't wait to see what Cartman can do. Uh, year, I guess, three, more like year two, 2.0, year two of the SMA Express. Um, you know, we'll get more into that preseason breakdown and everything like that, but the running game is going to be incredible. The O-line is going to be incredible. Man, our receiving group, I, unknown, of course, but dynamic, you know, great house, uh, Rico Flores, of course, Tobias Merriweather moving Chris Tyree to slot receiver, I think, is a is a really great uh, move. I think it's something that's going to propel his career and it's going to make the offense that much more explosive. So tight ends, you know, we, lo we lose in a uh, once in a lifetime player in Michael Mayer. Uh, still got Mitchell Evans. Um, uh, Holden Stays will, will be somebody that will become a, a very well-known name in Notre Dame circles. Um, and I'm sure I'm forgetting others, but uh, it's going to be a good year. Defensively, that's probably my only question mark, but on the D-line, I think they're a bit getting slept on a little bit. Gabe Rubio is a, a dynamic player. Riley Mills is, is going to fill in well. I think Jordan Botello is going to be somebody who's going to surprise some people. Uh, linebackers, I can't wait to see Jalen Sneed get some, some regular meaningful reps. Of course, you got the leadership in J.D. Uh, Bertrand coming back as well. And I'm looking for Mar Mar Marist Leifau, Leifau to have a bounce back here. Um, I think even he was not satisfied with how things went last year. Look for him to have a bounce back here this year. Uh, secondary, all-world all corner, Ben Morrison. Uh, Jaden Mickey is going to have a big bounce back year. Not that he had a bad year last year. He was a freshman. He was 18 years old playing ball. But uh, I think Jaden Mickey is going to have a big year as well. Safety, obviously a little bit of a concern. I can see minutes playing right away. Um, the transfer, I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Uh, but, again, we'll get more into this the season breakdown here as we get ready to go. Uh, tough schedule, man. You know, First couple weeks in, we've, you know, we've got um, Ohio State and what's going to probably be one of the biggest games in the history of Notre Dame Stadium. And, and I think that's because of the expectations and, and having a solid quarterback and Ohio State having some question marks at quarterback, really not maybe knowing who their starter will be, although by then they'll probably have that pretty well figured out. But it's going to be a, a battle. I really want to encourage you, man. If you have tickets and, and you're trying to get rid of them, we posted this on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, trying to get rid of your tickets please consider donating them to, if it's not Bill Supercons, donate, donate them to Vet Ticks. Donate them to somebody that they can go to a true Notre Dame fan, a veteran, uh, a, a law enforcement personnel, firefighters, something like that, so that these people that 
or our everyday heroes can can have an opportunity to go to something so special. So please consider doing that. I'm, I'm really dreading uh, the fact that there will be a lot of red. I'm already accepting that, but I'm not accepting that it's going to be mostly red. I want it to be a green out. I know that's going to be darn near impossible, but we got to give it a shot. So that's going to do it for us this morning. Again, it's Friday, uh, July 7th. Hope you guys all had a great 4th of July. Hope you guys have a great upcoming weekend, and we look forward to uh, continuing the interaction. Check out our, our page for our daily countdown posts as we get closer. Today's 50 days. We just had Zorich on. Uh, we recognized uh, Rocco Spindler. Um, so uh, tomorrow will be 49, and, and we'll go all the way down to, to game day when the Irish uh, reinvade, I guess, <laughs> uh, Ireland. So it's going to be a good time, and uh, wish you guys all well. God bless, and go Irish.